<laughs> yes, I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year. It's hard to believe we're into 2024 already. Um, hope you've managed to squeeze in maybe a little bit of research and yeah, some time with family and friends and create some amazing memories and stories to pass down through the generations as well. Christine, how have you been? Good. Yeah. Yep. Good. I know. It's uh, finally starting to feel like winter here. We had a wee bit of snow. Um, so yeah, it was it was it always it, I think is better if you have snow around Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm happy for it not to be here any other time. Yeah, I mean, I always said it'd be great if you got up on Christmas morning and you had a basket. <laughs> and then it was gone by dinner. I know, I know. Um, yeah, we had one day and it rained later on in the day and that was it. That's pretty yeah. much all we've had. So, yeah, I don't really, I don't mind it being wet, but I just don't like the snow and yeah. the ice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do you know, it was funny. I was, I was going through, I was packing all my Christmas decorations away um, yesterday and i've got my the box that i've got with all my decorations in it it's funny i was thinking how it's funny how you kind of accumulate all these things that have either been passed down in the family and they sit in and you don't always put them out you know on display you mm -hmm. know i mean i've got little kind of bells like china bells that, that my uncle gave me that are royal dalton and he gave me one for christmas and little nice. teddy bears you know like we teddy bears at the legs and santa teddy bears um, and they get pulled out and they sit out every year. But within my Christmas box, I've also got, do you remember these paper streamers that you used to get? You used to have those up every year. <laughs> and when I moved into my house, my gran had actually said to me, oh, you know, we don't really, because they didn't bother by then much with decorations, put them in with your Christmas stuff. And I've never, ever put them up, but they're always in my Christmas box. So every year when I go into my Christmas box to pull the decorations out, these streamers are actually in there. Do you know, it's funny because I was talking to some friends about a week before Christmas and said, you know, like you hardly ever get Christmas cards anymore. And we used to have them strung up all around the house. Yeah. Right. We'd have string up I know. and they'd, you know, and that was the thing. How far around the room did they go? I know. <laughs> yeah. My mom had all this, the kind of string with the little pegs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ours were always folded over, but yeah. Yeah, spin edges, put all these wee pegs on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shared a, a post in the group about, you know, what is Hogmanay and how Hogmanay had been celebrated over the years. And one of my second cousins who stays in Maine, she is a member of the group, she'll know who she is. Um, she posted actually in saying that she remembers as a child, um, her gran, who was my grand sister, um, who'd moved over to the States she says they used to do the first foot thing. And because yeah, so some of them had red hair, she says we were told, nope, you're not allowed to come in first foot us. <laughs> we, my my mum and dad used to always have a hug grenade party. Um, and then it was always the next door neighbour. And my mum would come down the stairs. So we'd do the, you know, the old Lang Syne thing. And then my mum would come downstairs with a tray and shoot him out the back door. And then he, she'd run up to the front door and wait for him to move. <laughs> but you knew he was coming. <laughs> I know, I know. It's funny how you like the traditions, you know, some some of the generations that when they've went to America or Canada have carried it on, perhaps mm. a couple of generations, but then they maybe start to make their own. Because um, I think someone in America was telling us about the, this ball that drops. Yeah, that's um, that's uh, New Year's Eve at, um, or, yeah, at uh, Is it Times in Square in, Times yeah. Square in, in yeah. New yeah, yeah. Yeah, in New York. I've never heard about that before where we actually say the bells because right. we have, you know it's actually it's it's not as big as I thought it was, but because we saw it when we were there, but it's crystal. It's all crystal. And you can see it as they get to the you know, ten, nine, eight, and then you just slowly watching it all drop down and then it flashes whatever year it is and says Happy New Year. And that was it was oh, I can't remember the man's name, Dick somebody or other, and we used to watch him every year. Mm -hmm. um you know he was on and that was you sat and watched that and then carried on it was that funny. was after we stopped having house parties when you know the, the drink drive um uh, laws came into effect and then people who were hosting the parties wound up being liable and they're like yeah we're not doing that anymore uh, <laughs> no, it was so, just funny because my, my husband was talking to a friend in america and he said oh something about the ball dropping and he said what he said, yeah. what are you talking about and then he started to tell yeah. him about this and we yeah. had kind of said, you know, we, we have what we call the bells. And it was because, you know, in years gone by, you know, the church bells would ring and then Big Ben would go and, you know, so it was all. Yeah, yeah. 
and um, Dick Clark was the man's name. He used to run like a music uh, countdown thing every weekend or something. But um, we never had fireworks. They're fairly new. Yeah, yeah, they're right? they as well. Yeah, the new yeah. Well. And you hear all the neighbors yeah. sometimes putting them on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And anyway. changes. <laughs> changes. I know. I know that's it. Um, so yeah, we thought we would actually nip into the group, um, not just to wish you all a happy new year, but also to share a few details about the theme for this year. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, so we, yeah, we had a bit of a virtual cuppa and um, we managed to pull together topics for um, the whole of 2024. Um, it's all about sharing stories and I don't mean sharing stories that you can certainly yeah. share with your family. Yeah, by all means do that. But we want you to share it with other group members as well and yeah. you know, let's all get chatting about things as well. So I have created a blog post. Um, I think it was yesterday I did this. I'll share it's it. Thank you. I know, I know. I've been on the ball. You're, you're right. Up. Yeah. <laughs> you did not drop the ball on this one. No, I've actually gone really proactive into 2024, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, January, we've got um, Scottish traditions and... So go on, um, go on uh, can you open that up a wee bit? Make it bigger. How's that? Yeah. Better, thank you. So yeah, January we've got Scottish traditions and customs. Um, we kind of felt that was quite a good topic because obviously you've got Burns Night um, kind of near the end of that month as well. So yeah, it'd be good to hear how you celebrate. I'll be in Scotland for Burns Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go celebrating have... necessarily, but I'll be there. Are you going to go and have haggis, neeps and tatties? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it's not just about what you do in Burns Night, but I mean, obviously we've just passed Christmas and New Year. What traditions do you have in Christmas and New Year? Do you have things in the summer holidays that you, that you do every summer holiday when you go away as well? So we'll be dropping in with different prompts throughout, throughout the month for that as well. Um, February is Scottish surname exploration. Um, we'd love to hear about the origins of some of your family surnames. Has the surname changed through time? Um, and it's also a great way to kind of discuss meanings and origins of surnames and we'd love people to share maybe lists of the surnames that they're actually got in their family tree. Wouldn't it be great if somebody made a connection? Wound up being a cousin. But you know what, not just sharing the surname, but part of Scotland, the word they, the ancestor was too, because yeah. then you're more likely to get a cousin. I think that's it. I mean, because you've got the same surname doesn't mean you're related. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in Scotland, yeah. <laughs> Especially, I mean, my name Wilson, I think, is one of the, the most common. <laughs> so my, my maiden name is MacDonald. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of McDonald's. <laughs> mm. um, so March, we've got um, Ancestral Homes Tour and Photo Extravaganza. Um, so we're going to encourage members to share pictures of either the homes or locations that are tied with their families. Um, it could be a place in Scotland or it could be a place where your family actually emigrated to. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a, a kind of picturesque cottage somewhere or a tenement, a tenement house in the, the city. We'd love to see it. And it, it does kind of um, start some interesting um, conversations in the group as well. Um, and then April, this is a good one for you, Christine, Heritage Travel Bucket List. Yes. Uh, there's got to be places that we'd all love to visit. I mean, I would love to go to some of the places that my family emigrated to in America and Australia. Um, and it's kind of hard to ignore the places because you can learn so much about the people and, you know, by researching the places that they lived as well. Um, so we'd love everyone to start creating maybe a bucket list of the places that they'd like to visit based on their family history. Um, I always think things like a Pinterest board would be great for this. That would be, I yeah. If you start a Pinterest board and say, right, let's, you know, put in um, the travel guide for that a particular place. Um, it could be articles about the place for the time period that your ancestors lived there. Um, and also looking at museums, you know, what is there in the area that can tell us more about the places? Um, they can maybe share, tell us a bit about social history or industry um, relating to the place as well, because so many people moved because of jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they followed the money. Um, May, we have the Old Family Photo and Documents Challenge. 
Um, we want members to share the top three family photos. Um, tell us who's in the photo. I've got April there. It should actually say May there. It does. I've got a typo. I'll go in. And Aye, okay, it. there. Yeah. <laughs> Found it. I know my husband, my husband checks all this too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll be having words with him. <laughs> um, so yeah, tell us who is in the photo and um, why they're in your top three. Um, and we also would love to see some interesting documents that you've came across. Has there been something within those documents that might have shocked or surprised you? Um, so my cousin in, uh, well, he's actually now he's in Australia, but he was going through um, some documents when his, he was clearing out his mom and dad's house. And found my granny's school certificate. Right. Like that's that was just incredible to see. I've actually been looking through some of my papers. I've got references, some of my grand's references from jobs that she was in before she got married. Oh, that's awesome. I know because it's it's not the kind of thing that people maybe would hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> so um June, we're getting into the better weather, hopefully. Um is a great way to get out into the cemeteries. So we're calling it a cemetery exploration challenge. Um, we'd love people to share photographs um, of the places that your ancestors are buried. Get out into local um, cemeteries, share photographs of what they look like. Have there, have there been any interesting cemeteries that you've come across and you want to share photographs of? Um, we'll also have a chat about burial records and websites that you might be able to use in your research. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. I'm kind of going to set myself a weekly challenge, I think, to get out in a different cemetery every day. Do that, yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I mean, part of being a genealogist is being a taphophile, right? Or a taphophile. So, yeah. you know, where they just have a real love for cemeteries and, yeah. Yeah. and stones. and Yeah. Yeah. I was actually down in the local cemetery in November and it was freezing. I mean, it was frosty. Um, and I was going round, round about trying to photograph all the ward graves. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got the ones that are on the Commonwealth ward graves, but I, I was going through every section. Uh, my sister in law came with me, and we just walked, and, and we ended up walking, I think, about five miles that day, just walking up and down and up and down these paths, um, getting around about taking photographs of them all. But it was loads, uh, loads that just, you know, are not Commonwealth ward graves, perhaps mm. abroad. Um, so, July, we've got utilising oral history interviews. Um, We'll be talking about the value of these, um, how it will have a discussion about how to conduct and preserve um, these interviews, how to store them and back them up. And we'll also look at websites because there are a lot of them out there that have oral history interviews on them. So you might not have one mm. of your ancestor, but there could be a website that has interviews of people who worked in the same industry, you know, served with a certain squadron or regiment during the war. Um, and you can learn a lot from them as well. And then this one, so <laughs> genealogy shelf three months, right? Now, I had to read- Claire's, Claire's been getting ready for this since November. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I had to reword it when Darren checked it because he said to me, is that a spelling mistake, shelfy? And I said, <laughs> no. I said, it's shelfy, not selfy. So yes, it's shelfy, not selfy. And what we mean by that is photographs of your shelves. Because as a genealogist, we all sit at our desks for hours and hours on end. We all have certain workspace setups, shelves of books. Um, I would love to see it and compare notes. Um, and I think it'd be a great um, conversation, <laughs> <laughs> a great conversation piece um, going forward. You know, with... when you do webinars, right, and you let people come on camera and you see, like some of them are sitting in virtual libraries, really. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a road trip to their house. I know, I know, I. And I mean, I find as well, it's like, you know, if I go to a library or, I mean, I was at a bookshop today, we went out shopping, we went to a bookshop. I'm always sort of looking, going, I'm going into the notes on my phone, going, well, oh, that looks like a good book. I'll put that on my, my list or, you know, I'll maybe look at getting that in the future. So, yeah, there's always that kind of list. And, and I think when you see people with bookshelves, you're doing that as well. What's that book? What's behind? I know. <laughs> Do you think that might interest me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and like you, so many people have photographs around them as well, the shelves. Yeah, yeah. So I've got quite a few at my wall. 
and it's yeah. sort of collages that I've that I've made up. Um, and and these actually were gold frames. They were really gaudy gold frames, and they got um, repainted matte black and um, yeah, collaged photographs put in them. Um, so you can tie things into your office. I'm looking forward to that month. I really am. I know you are. <laughs> Um, so September is Heirloom Showcase. Um, we welcome members to share images of any heirlooms that have been passed down in the family and also tell us the stories that are connected to that item as well. Um, October is Family Timelines. Um, I think it's always interesting, you know, you look at things that have happened in history. We've just had the COVID pandemic. There have been, you know, pandemics. Um, People going to coronations, you know, the, when you when you look at all the different historical events through time, how have these impacted on our own family's history? Um, how do we document the events in our own lifetime as well? Um, would love to hear about anything that you've came across. Um, there are books I actually bought. A, I'll be sharing that in that month, but I did buy a book that goes through the timeline, the British timeline, and it tells you all the historical events. So actually looking at that while you're doing your research and saying right okay that happened during about that time would that potentially have impacted on um my ancestors at that time and maybe you just like when you were talking about the coronation i mean my mom the very first time she ever watched television was the queen's coronation yeah right and that was always you know a big thing a big event because it was it was not just the coronation but it was also television mm -hmm. so it combined both of them right and then it's, I mean, we had the the kind of, I think it was the, the how many the anniversary of the, the Lockerbie disaster. And I remember that. And I remember speaking to people after that who had worked there and yep. hearing some of the horrific stories of the guys yep. who worked there as well. Um, and even, you know, I mean, I remember, you know, 9 11. I remember I went to get a part for my car. And I went into the garage and it was a television that was on in this um, spares place. And and I kind of looked at the telly and I said, what's going on? He says, well, there's something happened in America. And I think, it, you know, I think it's, it's at the Empire State Building. It's at some building, you know, and he wasn't really sure what, what was going on. Um, but I mean, I'll never forget that day and where I was on that particular time when I heard about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when Princess Diana died as well. Blew to the television. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you think of all these. Glued to the television with my phone in my hand because you know, talking to my mom and talking to my best friend and yeah. Mm. Yeah. Isn't, I mean, you think I think technology's and, changed things nowadays because we get the news so fast. You know, back then things would have been so different. You know, would they have heard about it? You know, going to church and how would they have heard about it? Yeah. Yeah. And the newspapers. You know, going further back, if they couldn't read, you know, would it be, you know, one man in the pub that could read that would relate the to, the, to the wider community? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. Interesting. Um, yep. So in November then is Ancestral Recipe Exchange. Um, what recipes were your ancestors famed for? Have any recipes passed down in the family? Would love you to share them. Um, wouldn't it be great if somebody somebody else could try somebody else's recipe out and see if they managed to see get it? Work. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll also look at websites or links for Scottish recipes others can try. I've got a Pinterest board that is full of Scottish foods and drinks and stuff like that. So it'd be great to kind of get involved looking at that and seeing what people like and what they dislike. Um, and then December is genealogy success stories. Um, We'd love to hear about the brick walls that you've you've overcome. December was um, brick walls and how to tackle brick walls. Um, I've just published a, a blog post yesterday, really on the ball, um, about genealogy brick walls, giving you some hints and tips of how to overcome them. So we'd love to hear actually this December about the ones that you have overcome. Um, have you made a shocking discovery? Um, I actually made one recently because um, I had um, family that were married, they, they were born, the kids were born and the parents, the date of marriage was given and there was nothing in the old parish re registers for their marriage, couldn't find anything, which is not unusual because they are, they're not always complete. 
And then I found a poor law record which actually said that they had never been married. Parents had never ever been married. They lived together as husband and wife, but he was actually married to this this other woman in Ayrshire. <laughs> 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 he left her. Was he my great grandfather? Because I think that's what might have happened to him. He left her and um, ran away with my ancestor. And it's funny because every 10 years in the census, they moved about. You know, they were in Lanarkshire, they were away down in Renfrewshire, they were in Ayrshire. They, were, they just jumped about. So I don't know whether they just jumped about because they were a bit scared that, you know, people were catching up with them, I don't know. But um, yeah, turns out in the poor law, they were not married. They lived um, together all those years, but they lied when they registered some of the children's birth that they were actually married. So yeah, there's there's sometimes uh, shocks to be discovered and never them. <laughs> and some, but sometimes those shocks actually fill in the story, don't they? Yeah. Like, oh, now I get it. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I knew they had this older son that was living with them, and I thought, <clears throat> that doesn't tie in with the marriage date that they're saying. And then I thought, right, he he's definitely, okay, so did the first wife die, you know? And then when yeah. I realised that she was actually in the census, and no, I bit of an oddball. Um, and he eventually left her as well. <gasps> Scoundrel. He had about nine kids or something, and then he left her as well, like 20, 30, just before he died. It's a bit of an odd one. Mm. Um, yeah, that's us for the year. Um, if you're actually, we're going to stream this onto or play it up onto YouTube. Um, if you're not a member of the the Celtic Ancestors group, you'll find a link um, down at the bottom. If you're watching on YouTube, um, we'd love to have you along. Um, it's a private group, so um, not ever, you need to be accepted into the group, and it's a great way of sharing your your stories of your Scottish ancestors so come and join us yeah for 20 yeah and you know what it's not just a matter of coming like the I think the the big thing for me in the group is the prompts yeah right they make you think about that part of your own research and so it really is motivating as well yeah yeah it's plugging us but yeah <laughs> and it's nice to hear you know that sometimes if you come across obstacles you know everybody has similar obstacles yeah, and there's always someone there that's maybe went through something similar that that can, you know, put if you've got a challenge, post it into the group because there's potentially someone there that can help and say I had a similar issue while I was carrying out research or, you know, and give you some some props, some ideas that you can maybe try out yourself. Yeah, so looking forward to. It. So um, we will go just now, and I I'm just going to post the link into um the group um to the blog article so that everyone can see what the, the topics are and we look forward to seeing all your stories and can't wait to read them yeah yeah right I've seen you christine right and i'm looking, yeah. forward, looking forward see you in a couple of weeks claire <laughs> looking forward to seeing you in scotland in a few weeks <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay everyone take care speak to you soon bye, bye.